that's something that I think people have to realize that if you're going to homestead, you're probably going to have to have a whole nother income. Yeah. And on oh, top of that, yeah. plan on working all the time. Yeah. Yeah. The, it's, it, Does that make sense? It's the weird, bizarre thing yeah. that we're all trying to have a simpler life by making it way more complicated. But you're having, <laughs> you, you're working all the time. That's right. All right. Welcome to uh, Till and Keep podcast. I have my yep. friend Chad Rosamond with me um, today. The reason I have you on, let me get, I'll do the quick uh, monologue because I called you and asked if you would come on and you said maybe, in which I took yep. as a yes and then gave you no preparation. Um, Appreciate the, it. The, the reason is your True friendship, right? What, here. what, what we explore and what we talk about a lot on the podcast when talking to dads is, you know, is the environment we live in is hostile to the family and everyone knows that. And, and, uh, a lot of people, we're fighting as best we can with our holy bumper stickers and rosaries hanging from the, But in general, a father thinks more seriously about the the structure and like the order of his home, or at least he kind of wants to. Yep. So a lot of guys that are on the podcast have taken um, the the route of trying to live on a homestead or do some kind of work or craft with their family. Um, Connor Gallagher, who was in here talking way too long, um, he... Is, he's come out with this well-ordered family book and program okay. I had around here, and he was he was saying, "I'm going to take the lessons of corporate America um, and apply them hmm. to my family." Which is, I'm going to okay. have, and actually, it, so it sounds like, "Oh, don't take corporations yeah. are bad. Don't make." But yeah, yeah. in his defense, he was actually saying, "No, the family and this the family needs to have uh, structure and order and, and be and run like a business. And it occurred to me that actually a homestead, you know, a farm, that's actually the main, it is a business. Historically, that, yeah. that the, is what it was. The home is a business. Yes. The home is a place to do something. Yep. Um, as uh, I think it was uh, not Russell Kirk, uh, uh, Quest for Community. What is his name? Oh, I've, I've got it. I don't know. Nisbet, Robert Nisbet. Nisbet. Yes. He points out that the family, it was not constituted in its nature to be together but to do something together yep. in that a lot of us are trying yep. to figure out what we're going to do. So the reason I wanted to have you on is um, you, when I first met you, I guess it was at St. Anne's. It was at St. Anne's probably 11 years ago. Wow. And you, and then we, we moved here in 2012 and okay. we met after a, a St. Anne's mass. That must've been yeah. similar. Yeah. Cause we were, we moved back. Yeah. So we're from North yeah. Carolina. So we might've, yeah. that must've been around similar time. So we met and, I don't know when I discovered or you told me that you have 10 acres in yes. the middle of Charlotte. So setting the – you're also well-known because you have a you have a special needs son. Yep. Very disabled. Yep. Um, likes to draw. And write. And write. Yeah. Crazy um, stories, yes. And you work for a bank. A large I guess, bank. A large bank. Yep. We don't have to name them. They'll probably yep. crush us. Yep. Um, and so you're working for a large bank. You you you. You are, you know, working hard. You're a good dad. You love your son. You take care of your son. It's a visible, you you know, as far as a family have something to do together, you you have a child that needs, yep. the, probably most of the family revolves around his needs a lot of the time. Yeah. You, you, you develop a business plan around it and you manage around that. So, yes, mm-hmm. he's a big part of our family and the way we live life, but he doesn't dedicate. Uh, dictate it at right. the same time. So yeah, yeah. Your order. I mean, you, you, you're ordering you share, around the reality. You share work around caring for him at the same right. time. Okay, that's a good way to put it. And you, but you told me at some point I have ten acres. Yes. In Charlotte, and I thought, what in the world? And I just want to describe, uh, and I want to ask you about it. When I was, cu- you gave me directions to your place, and you kept telling me <laughs> where it was, and I just I couldn't picture it. And it, it, you're driving, and it's just like stores and houses and it's just it's the city yep and then yep. you go down this driveway and all of a sudden you really like you're sandwiched between like these pop-up neighborhoods yep so and like all right first of all before i, I want to know how yeah. that happened yeah. and what you're doing but why did you do that and when did you start i don't know like when you kind of had that impulse all right so uh we like say so we moved to town in 2012 met you soon after um and before that, we lived in other places across the country, um, okay. but we had started learning about the benefits of raw milk, actually, with my, my disabled son. Um, he had some neurological disabilities, and we wanted to give him the best food possible, so we, okay. we started buying, let, let's not say raw milk, let's say fresh milk. Right. We started buying fresh milk when we lived in Utah. Okay. Um, 
and driving a long ways to get it, and we're living in apartments, and we just realized we looking for land. So before that, you were you were just kind of eating normal Correct. American diet, and yeah. your son's it, health compelled w- you to look. I would just say that we've always just eaten mostly American diet. Right. <laughs> Let's not um, be too boastful on that. Right. Um, but but yeah, so you do he, live in America after we all. We do live what in else America. Need? Yes. <laughs> Uh, so he needed uh, to be fed with a G tube. Okay. So we controlled all the food that went into him. So we you wanted to find him. the best food okay. to put into him. So you get into raw milk. So we get into raw milk, and we're like, "Wow, we really want to have space for ourselves to do something like this." And looking in YouTube, something was like difficult. growing, like growing food, growing food, growing okay. livestock. Okay. Neither my wife or I grew up with any of this. We grew up comp- completely suburbanites. Okay. Some military. Uh, travel around the country as well, but uh, none of this. Your parents were military? My wife's parents were military. My dad worked for IBM. We've called him I've Been Moved. Um, (laughs) So we moved a lot, but we're always in suburban neighborhoods. Um, Had a garden sometimes, um, and I grew up doing construction projects and remodeling projects. So you're somewhat handy. So I grew up being handy around things. Okay. and so anyway, we're in Utah. We're like, well, we don't fit in the culture out here. We we like the like it, but I took a job in Connecticut and lived in like suburban New York City. Really, wow. That didn't really fit us well either. We started looking for land there, and then I took a job here in Charlotte. Okay, so the, um, you you got here for the job. We got here for the job, and we started looking like, okay, what does it take to buy? land that and and our goals really were were yes some homesteading Mm -hmm. but to find a venue for our children to know uh one what work is Mm -hmm. two what the benefits of work are and three where food comes from okay right four small entrepreneurship right how do you teach a child here are your costs here's what the work you put in, here's the benefit you can get out of it, right? So we've always homeschooled. So economics. It's economics. economics. Yeah, it's just it's real life economics, real life, uh, you know, learning skills. Yeah. Um, Competency work. Exactly. So we. So you found the ten acres. We found the ten acres. It's in a part of town that nobody wants to live in. It's the worst schools around. Some mm-hmm. of the worst schools around. Um, I'm except for yours, your home schools. Except yeah. for our home school. Yeah. Um, and we're sandwiched between a bar and a and a pop up neighborhood on one side. Okay, I don't remember uh, seeing the bar. But yeah, uh, that's good. It's easy to miss. It's okay. Um, <laughs> don't look hard. All right, it's so, not one we visit. Let's put it that okay. way. Okay. Um, it, a church, a Church of Christ on the other side. Love our neighborhood neighbors there. Get very good friends with them. Mm-hmm. A gravel quarry across the street, so we get blasts during the middle of the week. You can feel the house shake, uh, and you get you know dump trucks up and down the road all the right, time. Right, right. Um, and then an interstate on the back side of the property. So it's that sounds really unattractive. It's very, but it was very unattractive for other people. Right. And and then the the last unattractive piece was that there is a plot of land in the middle of my property that I don't own. That. My neighbors in the back, they bought the house before, in, in one acre around it, before my house was ever built. Uh-huh. So they have right of way to get there. So mm. nobody wants to deal with that. Right. Right? So there are just all these things that were not attractive to other buyers that really, like, okay, we'll deal with that. Um, because you wanted the land. You because wanted we the wanted space. the space. Yeah. The property was a former bonsai nursery. Yeah. So it, they had a bunch of really expensive potted plants. That cool greenhouse I've seen. The cool greenhouse that I don't use effectively. Yeah. We dream of using it effectively. Yeah, totally underutilized. Yes. Um, but usually it's used to house chickens that we find that have uh, hatched right. their own eggs. Right. Or store hay. Um, yeah. So nice and dry. Yeah. So you, all right. I, all right. So this this place you find, I yep. mean, you probably rescued it. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it, it would have been inevitably another pop-up neighborhood. It probably... You can actually look at it on the map. You can see the streets from the pop-up neighborhood. They don't end in cul-de-sacs. They end in cut-off roads. Uh huh. That they presume. That they presume they could buy this property. Just keep going. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. So, have uh, they ever come to you? No, because that that neighborhood was built in 04, 05, right before 
mm-hmm. all the housing crisis in the mid 2000s and uh that neighborhood whenever i bought the property in 2012 houses were clearing in the foreclosure in the 50k range wow they're not exactly looking to yeah uh expand that project expand that project now houses are clearing for what i bought my property for in 2000 in 2012 okay so like the, they're selling houses back on uh eighth of an acre quarter of an acre for what i bought my 10 acres for wow so yeah nice yeah. It's, it's just unique it's about finding that piece of property that nobody else wants to right. deal with or do something with or get creative with yeah well i think Does that's that no it's i think the the parts of your story that are compelling that people ought i mean to take to heart is people call me all the time and they because they want to move to the land they want a homestead yep. but they actually don't really want to leave the city yeah because they have certain needs yep. so i would presume actually you you guys have needs because yep. of your son he we needs have to be needs close for my son your job was in town yeah i mean i i am six miles from my uh you know 43 story office tower that i mm. work in um, oh, wow, I didn't know that was that close. Yeah, I, I, I can ride my bike there. I've, I've ridden my bike at times to work, and it mm-hmm. takes me 25 to 30 minutes to give you an wow. idea of how how far away it is. Yeah. Not very far. That's great. Um, so it's close to work, close to doctors. Um, it's also parishes. Parishes. We have many local parishes that we can get to. We can get to about five different local parishes in 20 minutes. Right. Um, and we can be a part of those different communities. Um, and our children in our homeschool can be a part of different activities in those different communities. Right. As I well. mean, so I would say, I mean, you've blended because yes, um, <clears throat> the w- a lot. I think people are often shocked if they move to a rural location. Yeah. And they're conditioned to live urban or suburban lives yeah. that it can feel isolating. And then what what actually happens now in in the defense of the rural living, you you yeah. just have to reintegrate into your and like we have we know all our neighbors like we've, we're we're there but for a lot of people especially with kids yeah. they're just they just live farther from soccer practice it's not yeah. they're not really living any differently so you found land that you're able to work with you had the humility to say i'll live between a bar and a flailing neighborhood yeah. and, and, uh, yeah. and some protestants and a rock quarry is my favorite yeah. um so because and i can describe it i've been there once you're in your property it doesn't feel it doesn't like feel that like it, no it yeah. feels like you're in you're really encapsulated yeah. in it yeah, when um, people come and deliver stuff and say, I've been driving up and down this road for had 15 no idea. years, and I had no idea this existed. Right. And we're right off a four-lane road with a yes, what I'm center, saying. That, that, center concrete yeah, you're driving landscapes there. D- divided, yeah. you know, median. Uh, you're not expecting a farm not or expecting homestead. expecting it, no. Uh, so I think, I mean, one lesson that from that is you were, you were creative, you were humble, you were willing to take something. Because yep. what, what the other thing I was going to say is people will call and say, Man, you know, I just want like 20 acres in the country. I'm like, okay, first of all, you don't want to live you in the country. <laughs> yeah, and 20 acres yeah. is way too much land for you. Yeah. Um, you know, you can barely start. Keep, keep, yeah. Yeah, keep, yeah, barely keep your lawn mowed. What are yeah. you going to do with 20 acres? Yeah. Um, so you've got 10 acres, and it's not as if that, that whole 10, it's not like pasture. You've had to no, make it work. No, I've had to. There's hardly any pasture. Yeah. Very little pasture. And still, you have a lot of trees. You're, yeah, you know, I still have. I'm still, it's just a... You can spend a lot of money to create pasture very fast. Yeah. Or you can put in the labor and create pasture very slow. Yep. Yep. So uh, we'll, we, have, we need to do another podcast on the pasture decisions because we're, yep. we're moving much more you know, on our silver farm pasture. towards a. Well, we're trying to do a silver pasture. Although I gave a tour of it and Joel Street was there. I said, well, this is our silver <laughs> pasture. And he goes, this is not a silver pasture. <laughs> uh, okay. I well, I thought it was. And, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was. Let, let's, let's take a. Another tour with Joel. Yeah, yeah. we're we're planting uh, annual crops though for okay. the grazing for yeah. the cows. Oh yeah. So we're doing I, I right now. We've got winter wheat, yeah. rye, and then oats. Although the oats died because of the drought. Um, it got me some free government money out of that. Uh, that's another story. <laughs> it's so dumb. I can't believe they just have piles of money. They're oh, trying yeah. to. They're like, just trying to get rid of. They're just the, forcing yeah. it on you. Um, I, I get the emails about it, but I'm I haven't raised any crops. So. Right. No, they came out. Well, anyway, I could tell you the story. They they come they come out and. They just—they're not even looking. I, I thought they wanted to see the animals in our operation, yeah. and they just—they just trying to get rid of money. They're like, uh, did, "Are the horses part of the operation?" I'm like, uh, "I mean, agritourism, yeah." Okay, we'll we'll put them as a cow. <laughs> okay. Anyway, they just so pay you straight out of but my we're, pocket. Yeah, Jason, we're growing. Here you go, Jason. Here's here's a few bucks <laughs> <laughs> for your hay. Uh, and then we, we've got winter wheat. And actually, because the reason you're here is I'm picking up from you. You deal in chaff hay. I, be, I deal in a so a chopped alfalfa. It's a chopped, it's a little fermented, fermented alfalfa. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's sealed in bags. So that's a unique thing about. 
being a, a farm in the middle of the city is I don't have the community that, that you have of, hey. hey, my neighbor down the road raised, you know, 20 acres of fescue mm-hmm. orchard hay. I'm going to go get a few right. round bales from them. Yeah. I, You're I went and I got jungle. round bales last weekend, two weekends ago. I drove 45 minutes. Wow. To get three round bales and bring them back. Yeah, I get mine. Mine a farmer delivers them for free. Exactly. Better. You could probably deliver it on your tractor. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, we have. Yeah. Yeah. So, I what it makes it difficult for me is finding good quality items. Mm-hmm. Without because so the trade off is I you're, didn't grow up with this. Yeah. So I can't discern the same way somebody that grew up with it right would be able to discern. Yeah, and that can be. I, I've you're in those situations, and you, you the insecurity is there because like these guys know what they're talking about. And I yeah. don't. Yeah. Now the so the downside, the trade off of what because there are a lot of people that will find the um, trying to do like an urban farm like yeah. you, like you are more attractive. You know, my friend Tommy Van Horn, the beekeeper we had on, he started yeah. as a backyard beekeeper. Um, the trade off is you're actually not in an agricultural area. Yeah. Um, but it seems like you have found kind of a niche, like it's like bringing in the, you know, being a yeah. dealer for this yeah. hay, yeah. because there's a lot of, so are you mostly when you do, so you're a dealer yep. for this chopped alfalfa. Yep. I'm buying some today because yep. yep. government gave me money too. And <laughs> um, that. uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> why I was, like, I was like, yeah, order some. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we actually, we, we had a drought and we have, oh, yeah. it has been devastating. Yeah. Um, you, you'll see when you come for our I hay know. bill. Oh, it's, it's, yeah. It was awful the fall. Um, but so, uh, you know, I don't all the operations, I'm sure in the last 10 to 12 years, you've, you know, you've had all kinds of stuff, but mm-hmm. the, it seems like you have a niche of being sort of like a in the city farm connection. Yeah. Uh, so you might, you might not, it would be, I was trying to bring up, I told one of the farmers out where I live, I'm going yeah. to buy this chaffee and they're like, you're going to Charlotte to buy hay in a bag. Yeah. I mean, you just couldn't. Yeah. Um, it's but is that stuff though, you'll see a difference in, in the milk that comes from. Oh, the I cow. know I will. I fed, yeah. I did feed some yeah. that Craig gave me, I, although I didn't, but it was six you, cows. I couldn't yeah. tell. Yeah. Um, so have you, you're, you're, are you kind of a hub for, so that's a dream of ours, okay. um, is to, you know, right now I, I source product in because again, I'm not part of this community. I'm not, I don't have easy, easily accessible in any right. other way. So, uh, for instance, two weeks ago, I brought in three 1000 pound bags of organic chicken feed. Okay. So the big, the big bag, the big, the big totes, right? Okay. Uh, I sent two of those to a friend. Okay. The other one stays at my house, and people just come and scoop chicken feed out of that thousand pound bag. Wow! Is that the first me. time you've done that? This is the third time I've done this. I started okay. doing it last June. It's like Reedy Fork, or it's not Reedy Fork. It's actually New Country Organics. Okay. Uh, the Reedy Fork. I I don't know. <laughs> I, I've I, I've heard differing Ooh, opinions. The controversies. Yeah, there's know. there's different um, opinions about them. I personally am not a huge. Uh, I have to have organic feed. Yeah, uh, but I have friends that are so. Me too. I I'm don't... supportive, and I have the equipment. Yeah, I, I you're do... you're filling a need. That's I, a true economic. Well, need, right? what I wanted was their dairy cattle feed mm-hmm. because of the cow that I I got from you. Right. I needed a good feed. I can't go out to, you know, you drive 15, 20 minutes away yeah. and get your cattle feed. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't have anywhere to do that, so I need to get it in somewhere. Shipping charge was crazy. Right. So how can I decrease the shipping charge for me? Right. I can do it by getting stuff for other people. Right. So that's just being no, creative. But th- I think Again, it's, it's I, just more creativity. No, I think it's it's being creative and it's showing the necessity for those who are listening and don't understand. Yeah. You know, dairy cow and you might be, oh, I want all grass fed, but dairy cows have been yeah. bred to be monsters. Yeah. I, on our farm, we're trying, <laughs> meaning they have, give way more milk than they, you know, yeah. obviously anything natural, and yeah. they, they need supplemental protein. And not only that, our soils are so depleted in North America, yeah. they don't get the nutrients from the yeah. grass that they need. So you, there's a lot of supplemental. Just do rotational so, grazing. Uh, grazing. Just, just rotate. I know someone's like, well, we only feed them oats. And I'm like, you know, grains are a grass, by the way. Yeah. So people are like, well, I only eat grain. I'm like, yes, I understand that. But grains are like yeah. the fruit of the grass. And there's a, anyway, yeah. another, another yeah. podcast. But you, um, you have found, so you're in the city. So the challenges are, you don't, I mean, for me, I can, bring my cows to if, if I yeah. bring them to other pastures i mean i yeah. can i can yeah. you know, I, i've got a neighbor if, if i fix his fence because he's not going to if i fix his fence i can put my heifers over there wow. and things like that yeah. so but you're having to work out i think it's interesting and that's a good model because you're actually besides just your household as an mm-hmm. island you're actually becoming um you know some sort of economic viability well, for other yeah. people yeah I, and i would love to you know 
you've brought milk to be. Oh yeah, sold I distributed off of milk my, through. Off, yeah, that's through, right. Off of my property, I've talked to Craig. Yeah. About bringing ground beef and mm-hmm. ground and, and sausage. Craig is our shared butcher friend. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, it, it you know and like being a central distribution point for a suburban community that can get access to those things from farms that are further away. Right. Right. So, you know, we have a separate garage and we'd love to turn that into a small farm store. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll start bringing in, you know, 50, 40, 50 pound bags of feed, you know, for those backyard chickens. So this, but this chicken thing, this is the first time you've done it this way. Uh, this is uh, or again, by a toad in. And... Yeah, this is, this is the, since last June, we started in last June. Okay. Really it was because I ran out of dairy cattle feed that I bought from your, your right, place. Right. You know, and it was like, I, I got to do something. I need something. How can I do this? That's interesting. So. Um, how have people? Are they coming to you? Are they buying? Yeah, yeah. Is it mean, mostly Catholics. Yeah, uh, they're, they're, and... they're Catholic. It's part of our Catholic communities. I have a friend that has. She's a single mom mm-hmm. and has a small homestead that's four miles from me. Really? So she gets stuff. Um, she's been little... out. She's been out to your 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 homesteading days. Okay. Um, and I have a friend that's out east of town that he raises a whole bunch of chickens and sells eggs to, uh, to prisoners at a local, at one of, one of the churches, uh, hmm. you know, after mass, uh, I'll see him bringing, all right, here's your four dozen, yeah. here's your three dozen, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and but for so, us, at, I'm always torn on Sundays, uh, with, you know, we, our, our mass is at 830. Yeah. And we've already we've got to milk the cows and get the kids yep. out. And then yep. I'm getting text after text it's Sunday morning. I'm like, maybe I should put it into this. Like, can you bring me some milk this morning? Bring me some milk this morning. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but uh, but I mean, we we need to sell the milk, and they need the milk. So yeah. I guess I'll deliver yeah. it. Um, like the Jesus is going to flip our table over one day. Yeah. Um, we, we we just we just have people come to the house. Yeah. You know. So we <laughs> we most that's that's what we would prefer. Yeah. Um, but I, most of the people that are buying from us, I mean, again, it's people that live in the country, but they're not yeah. they're not farming. They're not. Yeah. Know, so they yeah. just want a convenient way to get it. All right, that aside, so uh, you've been, but you've been doing the chaff hay. Yeah, am I saying that right? Yeah, you're saying exactly. Okay, how long? That's my understanding. Okay, <laughs> of how you say it. Um, I've been doing that for seven or eight years. And that um, is, and the people that buy that from you, they're like the goat people, the it's horse. Some people. goat people, more horse people. For okay. instance, uh, the last five bags of that I had from my last delivery, which was last summer, I just sold to some people that had thirty plus year old horses senior horses that can't eat anything else. Oh, poor thing. So this is this is pre-digested, pre-dig- right? Yeah. And it's really good for their gut. Yeah. Um, so they can Probiotic. actually eat this, you know? So, so, I, so yeah. So where they, I live, they came from Hickory down. To buy that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the horse people, uh, that's a whole other That's a whole other world that I, I don't try to get into. But There's if, a lady if I got us. into it, no, don't I'd have... It, no, if I got more connected to it i'd have more people to sell to yeah does that make sense no that's a great actually we we do so, i said i would never get a horse because it's, it's like a teenager a non-productive oh consumer goodness, but yes. we did get we have a horse now did i tell you that I, i've seen the horse. The neighbor yeah, yeah the neighbor yeah. Get, oh yeah you saw I, whenever out. i brought pigs out she get and it's yeah. been honestly it's been awesome it's uh john senior said every boy needs a horse so yeah anyway although the boys were like we want a horse and now my daughter takes care of it so then, um, but <laughs> the horse, about right. there's a, there's a lady near the horse thing can be crazy. Cause, um, yeah. there's a lady, she would like rescues donkeys or something. Okay. And she, uh, she's a lander, very wealthy rescues okay. donkeys on the side, but she's ripping out one of the most mature, uh, vineyards in the County, big old, beautiful huh. grapevines yeah. to put in hay pasture to feed these decrepit <sighs> old rescued donkeys. And I'm like, oh my God. All right. Anyway, yeah. she won't listen to this podcast. It's fine. <laughs> I don't ever name anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, so the so have you guys? Um, you've made it twelve years. A lot of, I mean, my experience. A lot of people they want to do the homesteading thing, and the, about two years, two to four maybe, and they're done. It's an up and down. Okay, as you know. So you guys are a constant we, flex. We we started really fast. At one point, uh, my my now twenty three year old son, who's in a PhD program, at one point built out like six chicken coops, mobile chicken coops, uh-huh. and was moving them around. <laughs> so. It was a way for him to learn uh, shop skills. Yeah. Because outside of me splitting two by fours on a table saw, he built everything else. Mm-hmm. He cut everything. He fit it to size. You know, he That's put great. everything else together. It was great. Um, and but he was raising ninety <laughs> laying hens and moving them around. You guys had coops. ninety hens. We had eight, ninety hens. And what I was doing is we were selling twenty to twenty-five dozen eggs a week, 
and uh, wow. I was I would bring them into the office, and I worked at this point on a on a five hundred person trading floor, so really wealthy people, right? right? And in everybody the heart knew, of the global economy, everybody knew that I was the egg guy, <laughs> right? So I would just stock six dozen eggs in the bottom. And of And you the, were charging a fridge. premium, right? I was charging five bucks a dozen. <sighs> it, it, Come on. Well, so and I was not using organic feed. I okay. priced out how much. No, five dollars is good. It, it drives it me crazy. About, it was about two fifty per dozen. Just okay. I was charging. I, I was that I cost me to okay. get a okay. dozen eggs, and then I would profit. I good. would pay my my son the other two fifty. That way, he was getting some income from it. Again, right. like all right, here's a model. You decide which feed you want to you want to use. You right. decide which price you want to charge, right? And yeah. just those again that, that those economics. Ninety. Hint, I did not know that. Man. Oh yeah, it was. It was. All right. So you was, you like a lot of people, you probably hit it too hard. <laughs> we hit it too hard. You had there was we times got goats you had to, at the same time. Oh, we oh. had chick. We had yeah. pigs. You know, we we, okay. never, we didn't have the cow. I I've been, I had been advocating for the cow. Since we got there. I'm telling you, yeah, the cow. It, the cow now, is the center of the farm. Now it is. It, it, right, it so should for, have been for the So for the listeners, whole time. yeah, that, I'm an yes. advocate. I think uh, yeah. the Doherty's who yes. do a lot of, um, that a lot of, the, the, the cow can be overwhelming because you have to milk it every day. But if if you're home and you're willing to do it, as far as abundance, space, oh, yeah. like yeah. it's just so much. Oh, yeah. So now, so you, you hit it. I did that too. We got, uh, Turkeys, goats. Oh. So we had everything. Turkeys scare me from Joel Slotin's <laughs> description of them. Um, there, yeah. Well, I yeah. killed like a whole. That's, I killed a whole <laughs> bunch of them by accident. I mean, I killed some later on purpose, but the that didn't start well. Um, but it ended okay. But yeah. then we had goats. But then we got when we got the we got two dairy cows and uh, yeah. everything changed. Yeah. So now you've scaled back most so, of the stuff. I mean, are you? Yeah. So we we've got about twenty five laying hens. Okay. And you know we sell a couple dozen eggs a week, you know. And then you have the milk cow. And then we have the milk cow. Do you we still raise a... pigs every now and then? What's that? You yeah, still, I still pigs? raise pigs. We we raise pigs when we have excess. Okay. So right now I haven't bred my rebred my milk cow because again that's something that's difficult for me. Right. Getting an AI tech to come into the middle of Charlotte. Yeah. To breed my cow, I'm certainly not keeping a bull. Right. Is very difficult. Does that you make can sense? bring her home. So we are. <laughs> we had the podcast with um, uh, Connor yeah. Gallagher, and he was asking me, "What would you bring? Would you bring a cow and a bull to Mars if you were?" No, and I said, don't no, bring no, the bull. No, bring the semen. Yeah, but that's hard yeah. for you. Now, one, okay, so problem maybe solved is we're having trouble getting some of our cows bred back. We do have AI available yeah. to us, really cheap. Yeah, and. Um, uh, so we are going to bring a bull onto the farm. So maybe you should just ah. bring your girl there for two months. Yeah, I don't know if I'm willing to give up the milk for two months. Well, if I if I end up, so oh, I, I'm trying well, to find. Yeah. I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find a second second cow in mm-hmm. milk. That way I can alternate breedings. Rotate them. That way, you know, every six months I've got maybe a cow we could that's work freshened. Out. Maybe we could work. Does that out. make sense? Yeah, yeah. So right. so anyway, we talk about that offline. Yeah, that sounds, yeah. We, we got to work that out. Yeah, and then we'll do a podcast. But, yeah, that works. <laughs> You know, but it's about keeping that that excess uh, abundance of of nutritional food there on the property. Mm-hmm. Because if I had, I'm getting about a gallon and a half of milk. I milk once a day. Yeah, get about a gallon and a half of milk. So what you need for the day? What day. I need for the day, and and it supports two other families at least. Mm-hmm. I have two other families that just come by the house and they buy milk. Yeah, right. For five dollars a half gallon, and okay. they feed it to. Their I, was, I thought you were going to say five dollars for a. Uh, I was going to be angry with you. Five dollars for a gallon is too cheap. No, no, um, they feed it to their pets. Okay, yeah, so, pet, the yeah. pet milk. Got it. Um, so anyway, so you wait. Yes, but you started raw milk, and now that's where you're. That's that's kind of the center of your homesteading now. Yeah. Besides, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the buying in stuff. It is because when we have extra, I'll have pigs on the property, mm-hmm. and the extra will go to the pigs. Yeah. Right. Um, and when we when the garden is abundant, which we're not very good gardeners. We're, we're we're making a concerted effort last year and this year to be better gardeners. Yeah. Um, well, the good news is gardens start so full of hope every year. They and, they and do. Then by June, you're like, yeah. I hate gardening. Yeah. Or no, more like July, August. More like July, August. Yeah. yeah like I'm done. Um, you know, th- this past July, August, my disabled son was in the hospital for three weeks. Yeah. That'll ruin a garden. That that'll ruin a garden. Um, <laughs> although the cucumbers did great, so our pigs, I think they ate about four hundred pounds of cucumbers <laughs> because we were just like kids, just take all the cucumbers sure, you, and you take can, them to the pigs. You can market that. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, um, 
So we got a couple couple dairy goats. Okay, so then I'm going to start wrapping up here. Yeah. The, your experience was um, raw milk led yeah. you to the farm. You yeah. found 10 acres. You've made it work. Yeah. Uh, you've been flexible but stuck with it. Yeah. Um, it's kind of shaped how your family oh, yeah. works around. Yeah, yeah. I um, how many of them are now – I guess the the question I want to bring up you you've had to go through now sending kids off to school and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, do you have any kids that are rebelling against it now, or is it integrated? It's really so part of who you I are. I would say that uh, those later teenage boys not interested in being helpful at all. Really. As they got old, were they helpful? As, they were younger. They were helpful. I mean, my 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 oldest was the running egg this egg egg right. business. It kind of burned him out though. He got into high school and was taking like. 10 classes and right just didn't have time and was like well this is the thing that's gonna go mm-hmm. right yeah um but funny story about him he learned all all these skills he learned to be creative on uh, the other thing that i think i've my children have learned is innovation yeah so make it work make it work like we had a tree come down on top of a pig fence mm-hmm. we're getting ready to my wife and i are getting ready to go out on a, on our one date a quarter and my wife says you figure out how to get rid of this. And it's like a dead tree, hard as a rock, and he he can't move it. So he goes and gets a car jack, jacks the tree <laughs> up, pulls the fence out around the tr- around the tree, and puts all of that within the pig pasture. There. Wow. That was not – So that was go. whenever he was like 15. Now, just last fall, he's away at, get, doing his Ph.D. in meteorology. You know, total computers, programming. Okay, you that know. was my guess. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. <laughs> Not animal science. Um, and he says to us, I really want to get some more woodworking tools mm. because I have so many skills that I can't use. Mm-hmm. And my wife and I, were on the phone with him. We look at each other and we're like, he just told us that he had skills that he can't use. These are skills that he learned on the farm. Right. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. These are things that he learned. My my second oldest son about to graduate college, he is probably going to end up in a trade. Yeah. You know, like go and be an electrician with my friend. Yeah. Come and work with 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 our family business. So that you is know? what we're gonna um, so. we're gonna have you back on, okay. because um, you are now transitioning out of banking Correct. into a family business. Yep. And I want to ask more about that. Yeah. Uh, but not now. In the meantime, yep. uh, thank you so much, yeah. Chad. It's been thank you, awesome. Jason. It's always fun to sit down and, and talk to you. That's not, you know, on the phone <laughs> as we're going about our, our various ways. That's something that I think people have to realize, that if you're going to homestead, you're probably going to have to have a whole nother income. Yeah. And on oh, top absolutely. of that, yeah. plan on working all the time. Yeah. Yeah, the, it's, it, does that make sense? It's the weird, bizarre thing yeah. that we're all trying to have a simpler life by making it way more complicated. But you're having, you, you're working all the time. <laughs> That's right. So, all right. Well, so, thank you, Chad. I appreciate. Well, thank it. you very much, Jason. It's a pleasure. This episode of Till and Keep has been brought to you by Tan, Fraternus, and Sword and Spade. Till and Keep is a podcast that shows how the primordial command from God to Adam to till and keep the garden applies whether you toil on a farm or in a concrete jungle. Visit tillandkeeppodcast.com to subscribe and follow the show. And use coupon code TILL25 to get 25% off your next order at tanbooks.com.